Christmas. Welcome everybody to our very first virtual um, Alaska Master Gardeners Anchorage um, Garden Tour. And we have a very brave and wonderful volunteer, Linda, and her grandson, Caden, who are going to be giving us a tour. tour. Thanks to you. Hey everyone, my name is Linda McCarthy Beckworth, and my husband and I live on the Lower Hillside in the Sahali subdivision. We've been gardening here since 2000. Um, I moved here from California and I had to learn a completely new way of gardening because there you stick something in the ground and it grows. Here, even stuff that I plant in the right zone doesn't always grow. So a few things I'll share with you first. When we first started gardening, I just kept a list of what I planted and where I planted it. So these two books are from 2001 to 2009. I've got two of these. I started putting pictures in them, and then I started just keeping the plant tags. And I've gone back through my garden starting in 2000. This actually shows what the yard looked like to start with. There was nothing there. When we bought the lot, there were a lot of really nice birch trees in it, but our builder cut every one of them down. So I've made these since 2000. This is a picture last year of our Himalayan blue, which is my favorite flower. I don't have quite as many this year, but I do have some in the front and the back beds, and I'll show you those. I also tried actually plotting. This is a very uh, used map of where things were, I found out that didn't always work because things tend to move around during the winter. Now I label plants. I used to use these, but these labels came off, so I switched to these this year. I've labeled about 200 plants with a marker, and I find out even over the winter, I have to relabel them next spring because the magic marker um, washes off or snows off, I guess. Now I just keep a list of the plants and which bed they're in, and when they migrate to another bed, then I just add that to the beds list. We'll start out here on the front porch. These are the only annuals that I plant. You know, spermum, uh, bright lights, purple, and uh, they bloom from April when I planted them, as long as I keep the buds picked off or the faded flowers picked off they will continue to bloom until we get snow and I dig them up and throw them away. I use what's uh, called plant nannies in these pots. These are the only um, flowers that aren't on an irrigation system. This just goes down into the soil and then I use wine bottles full of water and that keeps the uh, plant water during the week. Okay, we'll start over here on the front porch bed. Front porch bed. Um, in the early spring, this bed had allium in it, which were some bulbs I, bulbs I planted last fall. Lots of shooting stars and chocolate lilies. But as you can see now, the nepeta or nepeta, I've heard it pronounced both ways, has kind of taken over the bed. I've got um, five different kinds of uh, catmint in this bed. The really tall ones are either Siberian Pools Banks or Six Hills Gold. The shorter ones are Junior Walker and Walker's Low and a Dropmore Hybrid. Back in the back in the far left and the far right um, are uh, lilacs. These were Madame Limon. They bloomed two weeks ago and I've cut back all the lilacs now. I just bought a sign that I designed that says my garden looked better last week, but it hasn't come in the mail yet. We have quite a bit of garden art. You can see back in the back, we have a chrome. That came from um, Florida that we brought back on the plane. Here's some of the Himalayan blue poppies. These are getting a little bit ragged. And some more back there. These look a little better. Unfortunately, they're kind of droopy today. The rain, we had a little bit of a heavy rain earlier. 
I have some salvia back here, but it's already bloomed and gone. Can't, you can't really see it now. This is a Miss Kim lilac. It still has, I mean, it's not, sorry, not Miss Kim, dwarf Korean lilac. It's got a very pale pink uh, flower on it. This is purple and white columbine. It's gotten really big and leggy. These are mountain asters. You can see the, some of the Himalayan blue poppies better back in the back. And some meadow rue. And then the white plants are obedient plants. They're the first time I I've tried them. I told my husband I bought them for him this year. We have a bleeding heart that's kind of intertwined in this lilac. And the lamium is called trailing ghost. This is alpine columbine. It's kind of starting to shrivel up. And these are alpine bells. And this is a meadow root that's fallen over. The rose on the trellis is a pole star, P-O-L-E-S-T-A-R, and it's blooming pretty well. It'll get a lot more lures on it. Now we'll look at the main bed. I've got an iris, getting knots. This is purple pavement, a little rose. Uh, more columbine. This is Winky Rose. Here's a better one back here. And this one is purple and white. Columbine is kind of halfway gone and halfway still here. Here's another piece of our yard art. This came from Charleston. It's called Bird Girl. It's actually on the cover of the book in the Garden of Good and Evil. The rose is a woodsy rose. It was about eight feet tall and it wasn't blooming very well. So I cut it back quite a bit in April and I don't see any buds on it. So I may not get flowers this year. This was my mystery lilac, but I found some notes from 2000. It's actually, the name is Mount Baker and it has almost a white flower on it. We have another piece of rusty garden art. The turtle came from Missouri. Do you want to do a panorama of that? This is what I call the front garden bed. Back in the corner, we have a Marie Brunet rose. Um, PG hydrangea and hydrangeas. I love hydrangeas, they're over there, but they don't seem to like my yard very much. Um, these haven't bloomed yet. I hope they bloom. Back over here, there's another dwarf Korean lilac. This is a red leaf rose and a ragosa rose. All of these irises, except for several varieties, we brought up from Dennis's old house. So they're about 20 years old here. And then he had them for about 15 years at his old house. There's some more yard art, garden art. We visited Japan a couple of years ago and I fell in love with the Japanese gardens and their um, lanterns. We found several of these at Falk's Nursery. And there's some spheres. Did you show the spheres? Yep. Okay. This is um, ruffled velvet iris. It's really a deep, purple and that came from the botanical gardens. We have two more PG um, hydrangeas. I think I'm going to get blooms this year. 
inside I have three cats and outside I have three cats. Um, this is Tubby Cat and Frady Cat and just Sitting Cat. You can tell I like rusty metal. We have quite a few of these smaller um, metal flower displays in the yard, both the front and the back. Those came from Tucson, Arizona. We found a metal worker there that seems to like to make flowers. Along here is um, Stella Diora Daylilies. Grandma, somebody asked if, do you have to bring any of your garden art non-metal um, inside during the winter so it doesn't crack? I don't. Um, I used to bring um, like the, the ceramic fountains and I've got some ceramic balls in the backyard. I used to bring them in, have a couple of statues back there and uh, last probably five years I just leave them out. Uh, the only thing I bring in is the yard furniture and I have a couple of tables up on the back deck that have glass tops. So I bring in all the furniture and the tables with the glass tops of course. This is another um, dwarf Korean lilac. You can't really tell because it's not blooming. Next to it is a Miss Kim lilac. This is a blank double decorbit rose. The bees actually love it. And it blooms all year, all summer and spring long as long as I keep the faded plant uh, flowers cut off. I actually thought this had died, but it turned out that it's still here. I've got three of these scattered in there. It's Veronica, our Speedwell, and it's Blue Bouquet. This is a um, Donald Wyman lilac. I actually left the buds on it because they hadn't opened when I was pruning over the weekend, so I left them on with this one has so you can see what color it is. I've got quite a few of the Donald Wyman. Did you and your husband do the rock work? Um, this rock work, we didn't. We had a broken concrete border around here, but it got really unstable. We hired a landscaping company that's no longer in business. It's called Steelhead Landscaping. And they were three college guys that went into business together. Uh, they did the rock, wall, the rock borders in the front yard. I'll tell you a little bit more about the side rock borders and the rock borders in the back when we get around there. This is just a dry stack. We have quite a bit of geraniums. Um, these are white. I like them a lot better than the purple. And then Grandma, mm -hmm. um, Emily asked, where have you found your lilacs? Oh, uh, lots of places. Alaska Millen Feed, the Botanical Gardens. I buy stuff at Faults. Um, all of these lilacs are multiple years old. So I couldn't tell you where I found any individual ones. Anytime I find a new garden shop, I stop and see what they have. Some of the ones um, came from Bell's. And then there used to be a little individual woman that had a shop next to Bell's on a Diarman, and I used to stop shop at her stop, but all those places have gone out of business now. I've got a battery powered edger so I don't have to mess with an extension cord or electrical cords. The iris is in, in this bed have just about finished blooming, the Alaska irises. These are all white irises that I've planted. This is another uh, David Donald Wyman. And this big one is a Velosa, and it was just covered in blooms two weeks ago. And I had to get a ladder to prune it back about two feet. So it's not in great shape right now. We'll go over to the other side bed. My husband's hiding back there at the garage. He's the one that takes, I mow the grass and edge, but he fertilizes it and does the hard work, the lifting. Say hi. Hi.
this bed gets more shade than the front bed. These are all Stella Diora daylilies around the edge, a globe Colorado spruce, ferns. Uh, there's another mock orange, just had not been doing very well, so I moved it where it gets at least more sun. Try that one. Hopefully it'll grow. This rose is a mochi hammerberg. And it survives the winters and it's getting very bushy and big. And the bees love it. These are just the Alaska irises. They're still blooming here and I've got a few in the backyard. I have lots of ferns wherever I can keep them growing. Another Japanese lantern and some spheres. This is Walker's catmint, Nepeta. And this is Siberian pool spank. It gets, it'll probably get a little bit bigger than this. I cut it back almost to the ground. Can you make rose hip tea from a uh, It's rush? Moji, M-O-J-I. I have not tried making tea with that rose. If someone wants to come back by and get some petals, <laughs> you could try it. Here's some more of our metal work from Arizona. This is Bellflower Lavendula. It's just starting to come up in bloom. And there's a little bit of Aleutian Speedwell here. It's not blooming right now. Back in the back is Virginia. It's not blooming either. It blooms early in the spring. And this is some more Siberian Pools Bank. Catnip. What we did do this year in April, with Caden's help, my grandson, we pulled up all the rocks on this side bed and all of the borders in the back bed. See if you can get up there to the front. And we pulled them up and then Dennis relayed them. And then we hauled in more gravel and then mulch for this bed. Some of these rocks we moved multiple times. This bed has ashley spirea and just the Alaska rugosa rose. And then this is bunchberry. It was, hopefully it will cover and sp spread and cover this bed. And I planted a little Aleutian Speedwell here. I hope it stays and lasts through the winter. Bed. This has mostly ferns, ostrich fern, and um, what's the other fern? Western. Western Shield fern. This gets almost no sun at all. These metal flowers came from Alaska Millen feed over several years. How are you going to get up here? They wanted to see the seating area. Oh, okay. This is where we rest <laughs> when we're gardening.